8 Things You Need to Know About the James Webb Space Telescope The James Webb Space Telescope has provided the first indication of how it will alter how people perceive the cosmos. SMAX 723, where a huge collection of galaxy clusters serves as a magnifying glass for the things behind them. This phenomenon, known as gravitational lensing, produced Webb's first deep field image of extremely old and far-off dim galaxies. These far-off galaxies and star clusters include several that have never been observed before. This image depicts the galaxy cluster 4.6 billion years ago. The image was captured by Webb's near-infrared camera and is made up of snapshots acquired over a period of 12.5 hours at various light wavelengths. Here are eight crucial facts about one of the scientific wonders of the age. 1. It's 15 years late. The James Webb Space Telescope, let's just call it Webb from now, has had anything but an easy path into its L2 orbit. First mooted as a project in the late 1990s when Hubble was still fairly fresh into space, it has survived calls for cancellation, budget cuts, and numerous delays due to the sheer complexity of its instrument packages. The telescope's primary contractor, Northrop Grumman, had a particularly torrid time of it and human error has frequently compounded the issues during the 40 million hours it took to build it. It was originally planned to cost $1 billion and launch in 2007. That it cost close to $9 billion and launched 15 years later is mission creep of some fairly epic proportions. Second, it's as much a spacecraft as it is a telescope. Unlike Hubble, which has spent all its life in low Earth orbit, Webb has taken station at a solar orbital position at the L2.1.5 million chem away, roughly four times further out than the Moon. This allows one side of Webb's sun shield to always face the Sun, Earth, and Moon, blocking their heat and light from reaching the telescope's heat-sensitive optics. Getting there took a month from launch, making it a proper spacecraft, albeit one without enough fuel to get back. According to Webb's current live stats, the hot side of the telescope is at 32, the cold at minus 236. In fact, the Ariane 5 rocket that launched it had to give it a slight underboost. This was to allow Webb to make the exact maneuvers it needed to achieve orbit, something that is difficult to finesse using the full 1336 tons of thrust Ariane can provide. Three planned mid-course corrections took place in its journey, all of which were watched with a fair few nerves but were executed flawlessly. Third, returning to the beginning, the purpose of Webb is to collect and analyze infrared light, which has longer wavelengths than what the human eye can see. As a result, it will be able to gather infrared radiation from the earliest galaxies. More than 13 billion light years away, the early galaxies may only appear as dim smudges with the Webb telescope's current power. However, those smudges will aid scientists in learning more about the origins of the universe as we know it. Fourth, the launch was not the most dangerous part. A launch is always a critical and a nervous time, though it has to be said the track record of the Ariane 5 is about as good as it gets. Out of 112 launches, 107 have been successful, and it last had a problem in 2018 when two satellites were delivered to the wrong orbit, both recovered to fulfill their mission parameters. The last 15 on the bounce have been successful with no problems. However, that was only where Webb's problems started. There are 344 single point of failure items on average, Mike Menzel said in a news briefing who is Webb Lead Mission Systems Engineer for NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Maryland. He added that approximately 80% of those are associated with the deployment. It's hard to avoid when you have a release mechanism. It's hard to put full redundancy into that. Fifth, it's not just about the visible spectrum. NASA likes to say that Webb's instruments are so sensitive that it could theoretically detect the heat signature of a bumblebee at the distance of the moon, which is partly why it's being sent to such a cold, dark region of space. Away from the primary mirror, Webb's main imager is the near-infrared camera, which will cover the infrared wavelength range 0.6 to 5 microns. It is equipped with chronographs, which effectively let Webb hold a hand up to block out the light from a bright object so they can see things close to it, such as exoplanets. 
A near-infrared spectrograph will enable Webb to analyze the spectrum of an object and extrapolate its physical properties, including temperature, mass, and chemical composition. A mid-infrared instrument features both a camera and a spectrograph operating in the wavelength range of 5 to 28 microns. This will hopefully provide exactly the sort of wide-field, broadband imaging astrophotography that made Hubble's reputation. And finally, the major instrument package is rounded out by the fine guidance sensor and near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph, which will allow Webb to point precisely, as well as investigate first light detection and much to do with exoplanets in the wavelength range of 0.8 to 5.0 microns. 6. Unlike NASA's Spitzer, which transitioned to a warm mission when it ran out of coolant. James Webb should maintain its cold temperatures for its entire lifespan. The liquid helium that keeps James Webb actively cooled, in principle, should never run out. It's a closed system. However, as anyone who's ever worked in experimental physics can attest, leaks inevitably happen, no matter how well you safeguard against them. Designed for a 5.5-year mission, at minimum, with the possibility of a decade or longer under the most optimistic circumstances, Webb shouldn't run out of its cryogenic coolant if it lives up to its design specifications. However, there's always the possibility that something will go wrong, and we won't be able to actively cool the mid-infrared imager sufficiently or for the entire mission, and that will eat into Webb's sensitivities at progressively longer and longer wavelengths. The same caveat applies to the near-infrared instruments in the event of sunshield damage or inefficiencies. The warmer the James Webb Space Telescope gets, the narrower its wavelength range it can probe will become. Seventh, 10 inventions were created for Webb. One of the reasons Webb took so long to get off the ground is that not all the tech was in place to make it happen when it was first conceived. Advances include a micro-shutter device with thousands of tiny windows, each the width of a human hair, and programmable to be open or closed to enable spectroscopic measurement of hundreds of individual objects simultaneously. A cryocooler was also developed that chills the mid-infrared detectors to the necessary temperature of only a handful of degrees above absolute zero. Space enthusiasts are always keen to point out the benefits of the space program on Earth-bound technologies, and Webb is no different. Engineers had to develop a technique for precisely and rapidly measuring the mirrors to guide their grinding and polishing, and this technology has since been adapted to creating high-definition maps of eye surgery patients' eyes for improved precision. Eighth, James Webb's mirrors are the lightest large telescope mirrors of all time. Each of the 18 primary mirror segments, when it's first manufactured, is in the shape of a curved disc and possesses a mass of 250 kilograms. By time they're completed, however, that mass has been reduced to a mere 21 kilograms or a 92% reduction in weight. The way this is accomplished is fascinating. First, the mirrors are cut into their hexagonal shape, which offers a slight reduction in mass. But then, and here's where it gets brilliant, practically all of the mass on the back side of the mirror is machined away all of which contributes massively to the new telescope being billed as 100x more powerful than Hubble. It's made of 18 hexagonal-shaped components that have unfolded at the L2 point to produce the final mirror. This will be able to look back 13.5 billion years in time to a point when the first galaxies were being formed only a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. Webb has four main mission goals. Search for the first galaxies formed in the early universe. Study galaxies near and far to inform the evolution of galaxies. Observe the formation of stars, from young stellar nurseries to the formation of planetary systems. Measure physical and chemical properties of planetary systems, including our own solar system, and investigate the potential for life in those systems. Then there's what NASA likes to call the unexpected and unknown. Webb also has the capacity to reveal completely unexpected aspects of our universe, as Hubble has done. Webb's observations, which are designed to answer specific scientific questions, forge additional questions that can be addressed in future observation cycles and by future missions and observatories, such as the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope. That's all in this video. 
If you like this information, please hit like and subscribe to this channel and be connected to this channel for more space information.